God bless you and welcome back to the Triad Room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. The title of this video is The Way of the Cross. And really, I'm making this video in reference to Easter, which is fast approaching. Um, depending on when you've seen this video, Easter could have come or it could have gone, but this video hopefully will still be relevant to you. I was privileged back in 1991, some three decades ago, to visit the Holy Land, Israel. Such was my uh, hunger and thirst um, to literally walk where Jesus had walked. I said to myself, you know, I'm going to book a flight alone and I'll visit the Holy Land. And that's what I did. I spent several days in Israel. Um, I went by myself, luckily, or rather I was blessed in that once I arrived in Israel, I was able to link up with uh, fellow Christians who took me, as it were, under their wing, and we went on, as it were, a crusade around Jerusalem. For me, it was like a spiritual reawakening. Um, I could now physically stand in the vicinity where Jesus once stood. I could literally see, touch the places where he had walked, and perhaps touched. Um, I visited the little town of Bethlehem where he was born. I submerged myself into the River Jordan where he was baptized by John the Baptist. I visited the Wailing Wall. Um, I stood there, I prayed, I left some prayers in the cracks of the wall. It's, it's a custom even to this day where many Christians will go and they'll write on a little small bit of paper and they'll put into the cracks of the wall of Jerusalem their prayers. And we can still see uh, the native Jewish um, brothers still actually um, praying at the Wailing Wall. It's a a portion of wall from the original uh, Solomon's temple that's still there to this day. Um, so it's, it's, it has significance. I was there. Um, I sailed on the Sea of Galilee, the very same sea, if you can recall in scripture, the Bible says when Jesus was at the bottom of the boat and there was a, a storm and the disciples got uh, frightened because they thought they were going to die and Jesus had to rebuke the storm. Um, I believe it was the self same sea which Jesus walked upon and Peter joined him. I was privileged to sail upon the Sea of Galilee or the Lake Tiberius as it's known. Um, I visited the area they said to be the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed uh, the day before he was betrayed by Judas. The Bible says in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed until his sweat became as blood. Before he was, as it were, betrayed by Judas. Before he was hauled before Pontius Pilate and falsely accused. Before he was scourged, flung into a hellhole of a dungeon. The precursor to his horrific death on the cross of Calvary. I was totally submerged in the life and the times of Jesus during my visit. You know, I could go on and on. There's so many other places I, I went to, I visited, you know, that touched my heart even to this day. I would love to go back, by the way, um, if I'm privileged to do that. Um, I could go on, but time permitting, you know, time permitting. My central theme really in this video is to focus on the way to the cross on the way to the cross um, as I've said with Easter fast approaching you know Easter to so many of us <clears throat> is more than a holiday it's unfortunate that Easter has become very secular to millions of people around the world who do not share our faith or our belief to them it's a, a time to eat uh, hot cross buns, it's a time to um, 
to eat chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs, that kind of thing. Um, they don't see uh, the true meaning or essence of what Easter is. But to us believers, Easter is much more um, than that. Um, symbolically, you know, it's about reminding us of the steps figuratively and literally the steps Jesus took to the cross carrying much more than a wooden cross you know um, it wasn't it wasn't just about him carrying a cross a physical wooden cross it was about him carrying something much more heavier than that and that was our sin or sins he took our sins you know upon himself and he carried that you know, bleeding and dying to his death on the cross of Calvary. John 3.16, which we repeat so often, you know, is in essence Easter for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the route uh, Jesus took to his crucifixion um, is known as the Via Dolorosa. The Via Dolorosa. I've got the spelling up for you if I pronounced it wrong. It is believed to be the processional route in uh, Old Jerusalem, a winding processional route through the Old City where Jesus actually carried the cross some 600 meters or so to Calvary. And all along that route, you know, he was uh, spat at, he was slapped, he was scourged by the Roman soldiers with the catanine tails, scorned by most of the public who hated him, humiliated and so on and so forth. All the way, 600 or so meters, to his death on the cross of Calvary. Why? Because of love, the agape love, the unconditional love that he had for you and I. And again, I was privileged to walk the full length of the Via Dolorosa. You can see it from this photograph of my younger self over three decades ago. And like Jesus, I carried a cross, but my cross was a mocked up cross. You know, it was a few pounds, really. It wasn't really heavy, but it's more symbolic. And I carried that cross part way. Although I walked the full length of the Via Dolorosa, I carried the cross part of the way. And between you and I, I was overcome with emotion. I mean, I can't really explain it on this video, but I was overcome. You know, even the small route that I took was psychologically heavy upon me so I, I can't really imagine how Jesus must have felt going all the way all the way for me all the way for you for something that he did not do purely out of love that's what Easter is really Jesus walking the Via Dolorosa to his death on the cross for you and I praise God What he did for you and I, you know, as I've said, words cannot explain it. You know, no matter how we, in English language or Hebrew, or whatever language you speak, what Jesus did for us on the cross or the way to the cross cannot be described. And as I close, you know, it's a short video, but as I close, I'd just like to refer you to one of my favorite uh, gospel artists, uh, Donnie McClurklin. Uh, I think he's now Reverend Donnie McClurklin. He wrote this wonderful song back in, or he published it back in the year 2000, and it's sung in many, many churches. And I'll just quote the first or the fourth uh, verse of the song. And it says, um, well, the cross will always represent the love God had for me. When the Lord of glory, heaven sent, 
gave all on Calvary. He did it just for me, for me, just for me. Hallelujah. Jesus came and did it just for me. And as I've said, that is the true essence of Easter. Not the hot cross bun, not the fried fish and the hard old bread and the chocolate bunnies and everything else that is that is actually um, superficial and secondary. The true essence of Easter is what Christ did for us by going all the way to Calvary and dying for the sins of mankind. May God bless you. May God keep you. And as I've always said, please share this with as many people as you can. In fact, in sharing this, you're evangelizing the truth of Easter. May God bless you. Until next time. Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you, may God keep you. Until next time.